Welcome back to Harbaugh. President Trump took his America First message to an international stage at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, where he's rubbing elbows, you might say. There's a map of it in the Alps there with the political and economic elites right now. The very people, by the way, I remember he railed against during the campaign, didn't like those people. While the forum traditionally champions open markets and globalism, for Trump it's an opportunity to go his own way, apparently, and champion something different. Here he is in an interview with CNBC. When I decided to come to Davos, I didn't think in terms of elitist or globalist. I think I thought in terms of lots of people that want to invest lots of money, and they're all coming back to the United States. They're coming back to America, and I thought of it much more in those terms. Well, for more, I'm joined by Jason Johnson, politics editor at theroot.com and an MSNBC political contributor. You know, I I think Trump. I don't think he's going to look good over there because he is charming his way around over there. He's been nice to Netanyahu and, and, and Theresa May and all the world leaders. He's mixing in with them. I don't know all the people who they are. Steve Schwartz and all his gang are there. But that isn't the crowd that elected him. And I'm not sure that crowd, the 1% of the 1%, gives a rat's butt about the people up in Scranton or Erie or anywhere else. And all they want to do is squeeze as much as they can get out of those people, reduce the number of staff positions in those factories, reduce the number of packages they got to pay, go as animated as they can and as foreign as they can, and nothing has stopped this under Trump. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped, and it's a complete abdication of what he claimed he was going to do when he went into office. Yeah. Last year, he was too good for this. Last year, when he was running, when his first year in office, it's like, I'm not going to go to Davos. That's against the populist uprising that I represent. Now he's there hobnobbing, trying to get at the cool kids' table, and it just reveals the insincerity of a lot of the things things Trump has said. At the end of the day, he desperately wants to be part of that 1% and they care about regular people. Yeah, I just wondered about this. A couple of things that I think most people, uh, I'm going to talk about this at the end of the show. It seems to me the two things that uh, my father was worried about animation. I mean, uh, animation was something that could take a lot of people's jobs right. away from them. And people worry about trade. And we, worry about, you know, we keep hearing about these companies that basically make the decision, I'd rather give, pay a person three bucks an hour than right. 25. And that is good business sense, but it is not human, and it is not what we want to have in our leaders. And it's not, and it's not bringing jobs back. Look, you know, Chris, you and I probably go to a grocery store where there's a self checkout aisle. That may seem convenient for us. That's every putting people time out of work. I go, every time I go to the drugstore, I won't name it. I think of all those minimum wage women that used to work in there behind exactly. the counter, and they're all gone. There's exactly. one or two managers left, and everybody else checking themselves out. Right. By the way, at the airport, we're checking ourselves out. And by the way, at the airport, when you buy a hamburger or a donut. You do it through a computer, and you sit at your lap at the desktop there. Right. And there is no waiter around. And there's no way that that's going to be changed by Donald Trump hanging out with Davos. But, but here's the other thing about it, and I think this is important. He's also going there because this is the only way Donald Trump can interact with some of these world leaders, because he's not welcome in their countries. He can't uh -huh. go hang out with Theresa May. He, he would be booed so if he tried to So multilateralism is the only bilateralism for <laughs> exactly. this guy. Exactly. This is his chance to hang out. This is, let, meet me at the diner on the corner, because I know your mom won't let and me to the And he goes to meet with Netanyahu. No, I mean, Netanyahu, we can argue about him forever. But this me, he didn't have to go there to meet him, though. I was just local. You know, it's politics again. Thank you, Jason. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Exactly. And I hope he talks to Trace a little better. Anyway, up next.